thank you for labels of our geologists who's helped and supported me in well-being. And as you can see, the disadvantages and advantages, that's my title, basically I'm showing you our experimental archaeology and the way it well benefits and holistically helps. This is Osgood and Bennett's. Um, ad we adopted their ramp method of access to a trench. Before we got there, sorry, all oh right. Before we got there, um, another enabled archaeologist who's a lecturer hadn't been allowed by their company to go on in the trench. They went down the ramp. They actually went and did it. This is well-being. I'll quickly cover the first year of our inclusion method last year, which were experimental as well. Our drawback successes, our future collaborations this year will be breaking guarant heritage next year, Thames Discovery, and finally with Wessex Archaeology with our final income year. And then I'll talk about the holistic benefits for all groups and society at large. Uh, uh, sorry. Don't worry. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Bit of spot. Yeah, mate. Right, we, we had a mass, I'm going to give you one of our examples, I'm not going into full details because people keep nicking my ideas, but um, we had great success at our writing, drawing and more. To the left you can see that we had a high percentage of success using, um, believe it or not, a pen that's already out there, which I'm not going to give you, ha! but the point is people with weak and they can't write, draw, plan and have hardly any grip um, compared to the right, uh, which way, yeah, compared to this one where it's just more than sharpie and you can see the grip is less. We had a 95% success rate on that. The person was able to draw for the first time after being in doing a BA for three years. Um, we've also now producing um, two newly different shape trials, one for limbless participants with the rocking motion I have invented, which is working, although we haven't got it in full production yet, and also another for those who can hardly grip or have weak hand grips. All this is beneficial. All this contributes to society. Just like you get in a car, just like I use a cane, it's transport from A to B. That's all this is, is extra archaeological equipment. Um, and our failure rate, the, the one that we failed at really, was introduced by another archaeologist <coughs> on the training, a student in fact. And we used an ordinary grip, you know, that widens a pencil or pen. And we tried that with the drawing, planning, etc. No vote. 50% and 40% is even useless, really, on the finds. I hope I, I've done it again. I don't know, what should I press? Sorry, I'm not sure totally logical. I'm sorry, forgive me. Right? Yeah, I am. Okay. Which one? That one. Oh, I've been yeah. pressing that. Oh, right. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. Thank you, though. I'll be sitting up and going. Um, right, after a very short chat with my one participant last year with many mental health condition issues and also with quite, not severe mobility, but quite severe, in a wheelchair 99% of the time. We had a short chat and I explained to her the social... Oh, whoops. We had... Um, the way socially to do things, you know, mental health, you can only take so much pressure, and so on. And uh, she successfully interacted not only with others on the team, but also with the public, and shared with them and taught them things on the finds. And she also successfully interacted, and I, if I have time, I'll tell you about the deaf child who is now going to train to be an archaeologist at eight years old. Right, BRP support was superb, but one thing, and I'm not meaning a specific group on this, an overview of those of you who are so fantastic, 90% of you who do support us in the Enabled Archaeology Foundation, which I'm no director of. Many archaeologists want to support us, and in so doing, they're really great, and they, suggest, they say, right, we'll do this. Uh-uh, that's for us. It's not with us. With us is you're listening to us, just as Richard listens to me, I, and I nicked his idea, and so on. We listen to each other, because it's not you and me over here, it's us. We're all archaeologists, and to a point, all of us are enabled archaeologists. You could argue that forever. Right, next, oh, I'm doing it now. Right, um, in BGH, 
There was two in April, but one. <laughs> we didn't realise it was going to be there the week before us. We did new and and sorry with BGH we will be doing some new inclusion methods which are being formulated now by our SMAT team. That's um, satellite medical archaeology team, a doctor and either a nurse or somebody with experience of, and also two archaeologists, Kat Reese and myself. Um, we meet up just for two hours, discuss the person, and if they want to Skype, great, if they want to email, whatever. Um, we use responses via that, and then we formulate the new inclusion ideas, also going back over what we've been doing. Such as, for instance, the trials that I started with, I actually started with an upside-down garden implement that people use that can't reach the floor. That's how we adapted it. Um, in, yeah, and so hopefully we can learn a lot because they have much more experience in certain areas and we've got experience in others. Um, from all the three groups we'll be with. So it's all holistically done. In TDP next year, in the summer field work, we'll have three to eight enabled and try and newly produce their design trials. Unfortunately, the production was going to be this summer, but the, the people haven't got back to me, so we're going to have to look elsewhere. Um, but hopefully it will still be next year. And rest as before, you know, which will include offline drawing, planning, and recording that can be done quite simply, although people do argue about testi tasting the soil and so on. Um, some do, some don't. And if it's funded by then, because we have a lot of promise of a minute amount of money at the moment, um, for once we're set up by the very end of this year, our application's in, um, but they haven't come across anything as unusual as this before. I think surely you are. Anyway, and then um, when we do ethics and archaeology, I've already approached the people I need to, and they're very willing. Um, we're going to use all of the inclusion methods that have been successful. Um, over the three years, and then finally, you'll not only put that into practice, bring our visitors along to look for my income idea, and then um, we'll have the full out plus visits from others who will pay us um, outside of archaeology. And then, and they are very interested um, from what I've heard so far. And then, um, I've just been offered a PhD in another country, nobody wants to know me here, so I'll be going over there for two years, then I'll write up. Right, and it's valuable advice and learning together. What Gemma and I did just then, that is teamwork, that is inclusion, that is giving a damn about each other. Just as the culture of all the forces do that, we do that because it's, my mother talked to me a lot about the war, I'm older, she was a housewife, and the community spirit is exactly what we are now facing, having in Enabled. Um, future collaborations, you want to learn from each other. We think, and certainly veterans do, I can't tell for all groups, um, training schools, think outside the box. We have different perspectives of seeing. Where you find it simple to go up five steps, we strategize. I look at the pavement and I'll miss that bit and look that bit, it's so natural, and everything becomes a different perspective of seeing. And we tackle issues as they come, they're not problems. Why the heck should they be problems? And it's all the well-being and there we go. Yeah. Now, as you can see, as a social construct, as you can see here, there's a man who can use his feet and a man that can use his hands, but they can't do it on their own. So they do it together. It's also, in a sense, not a cheaper workforce because we are very valuable and very worthwhile and enabled archaeologists everywhere. But we've also got the fact that um, people are seeing us. When I did my undergrad degree, I did a... Um, a survey of 250 different members of the publics. And I only put myself in it and it's all that, you know, digging and so on when I was digging properly. And the overwhelming attitude was, yeah, we want far more enabled archaeologists. What do we need archaeologists for? You're much better. And I was staggered. And yet most of the country do not want to know anybody who's disabled. Not only are we doing all mixed together, not just as disabled groups, and we're not disabled in any way, but also with everybody else. They come familiar with us. It destroys all barriers. I'll bait the 10% who are so aggressively against us at the moment. The benefits is that it not only progresses participants to 
know and know their abilities and not be scraped off the floor yet again from being treated like I've had to two weeks ago when our first ever enabled archaeologist were violently assaulted by another um, work member um, and in hospital and so on. Um, anyway, we will be seen, especially as we go out into the community, not just a poster, oh look, you can come to this. No, go to their comfort zone, go to the disabled groups, go to the um, other groups and go into their comfort zone so that they can come into our comfort zone. And that's talking about everybody. Um, enabled archaeologists that are of worth to go and do best practice, and they do do it. And we will show in our jobs, paid jobs next year, that we can and do. And society's image of disability, which has always been the mental incapacitated, you're incapable of, let's pat you on the head, charitable model, is turning towards social um, disability, you know, um, idea of. But it's going to be very slow, and it's happened effectively. Right, we're not incapable, we're capable. We will carry on the research and do all this, and it aids growth and beneficial advantages for all disabilities and for all groups, and brings positive images and will eventually change society.